when I became a shepherd, I, I had no flock. But the Lord provided. I believe in him. And he brings the sheep to me. Well, this is it. This is the place where you found him. Yeah, it was, uh, it was nighttime, of course. How late? Maybe, maybe midnight. Mm. And you were on your bike. Yeah, I, I was, uh, I was, I was coming home from work and some on the ground. I, I could tell something was wrong. I, I got closer. His face was bloody and. Uh, was he awake? Barely. Uh, he, he was, he was, I could tell he was drunk. He kept mumbling something and. I could tell no one came out and helped him or and checked on him or anything. Except for you. Tell us what you did. Um, well, I didn't do anything really. I just, you know, I just helped him up and I took him over to the gas station and um, I, I did, well, first thing I did is I called him a cab and then uh, I washed as much of the blood off his face as I could. And, I, and, then, and then when the cab got here, I just gave him his driver's license and, and that's where we went. You saved his life. Um, I don't know about that. I just, I just kind of did what I thought I should do. Um, my bike was stolen. I left it here when we went off in the cabin. When I got back, it don't was worry about that. Don't worry about that. You're a good Samaritan. Christ knows that. He put you here for a reason. The Lord will provide a new bike. I know it. Okay. Thank you. Reverend, you had a lot of uh, wind sound that time. Um, I, I don't know oh. if it's really a clean take. Oh dear. Let's all pray right now. Let's pray to make the environment conducive to your message. All right, just bow our heads and pray. Okay? I, uh, <clears throat> I, I live next to the Kearns. They're a nice family. Leslie's a good mother. But I, I've noticed over the years that Roy has a problem with alcohol. I've been struggling and praying to know what the best answer was. And then God showed me. I turned on the TV one day and I saw Reverend Cunningham's show. I couldn't believe that his church was just a couple miles away. People come to me all the time looking for help with their loved one. And I'm always very careful. And when Tom came to me and told me about the Kearns, I told him that I needed to meditate about it. So I spoke with God the next couple of days. And God told me that I needed to talk with Roy. Hi. Oh, you must be Leslie. Yes. Leslie, I'm Reverend Cunningham. Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Thank you for having us in your house. And uh, we have... Uh... Pardon me, excuse me. Well, you know the Lord works in wonderful ways. The uh, human body, the human experience. The blessings of God's handiwork displayed for all to see. My husband's quite the artist. I see. Yes, he is. Well. Oh. Is this your child? Yes. A very handsome young boy. Thank you. Yeah. Is he home today? No, he's all grown up now. Mm -hmm. He's been fine. Maybe he'll come back later. Look at him right there. Mother and her handiwork. I'm sure he's a loving young man now. Thank you. I made some coffee. Would you like some? That would be wonderful. Tom? Yes, thank you. Yes, yeah. He just started drinking a few years ago. I mean, he always liked to drink a beer or something after work, but not like this. Hmm. Leslie, how does it make you feel when he drinks too much? I don't know. I mean, it's his business, but
but sometimes he gets loud and breaks things. He broke my mother's china once. But you forgave. I guess. Leslie, are you a Christian? Yes. Do you go to church? Sometimes. I mean, on Christmas. And what about your husband? Well, we're both from Catholic backgrounds. Catholic. The problem with Catholics is they really don't understand the grace of God. If they did, they wouldn't have confession now, would they? Leslie. I would like your permission to speak to your husband. Now, I can't do anything for him, but I know God can. Okay. Okay. He's been in bed all week. It's lucky he had some vacation time, so that would fall. Roy, this is the priest from... Yeah, Reverend. He wants to talk to you. Oh, can he not speak? No, he bit his tongue that night, and he's still healing. Hello, Roy. I heard about what happened the other night. I'm sure he's in a lot of pain. Yes. But I know God will provide another way for us to communicate. Roy, I'm sure you're feeling a lot of guilt right now. That's your sin. It's like a big weight pushing down on you. But Roy, we're all sinners. Tom here, and your wife, and even the camera crew. But you see, Tom, we're all despicable. Without Christ. And your wife has told me that you haven't been communicating with God in a long time. Is that true, Roy? Hmm? I think it would be best if you left me here to communicate with Roy privately. Talk with him privately, okay? Okay. All right. I think that means you too. Everybody. All right. Everybody reassemble outside. And when we're done, when God's done doing his work, I'll call you back in. Okay. Okay. Could you close the door, please? I really can't explain what happened in that room. All I know is that the spirit was there. I held Roy's hand. And after a few hours, he started to weep. I believe that he felt Christ's love in that moment. And over the next month, Roy and Leslie's lives changed. Roy came out with us to a men's retreat and found the support he needed to live a holy life. And now he is serving God. And even Leslie, she's becoming active in our church. And, like I said, the Lord provided Luke with a new bike. <laughs> See, we don't need to confess our sins in order to be forgiven. And we certainly don't need priests. Nothing separates us from the love of God. The blood of Christ has washed us clean forever. We don't need to be sorry for the wrong things we do. God's grace covers us. <laughs>